Hey everybody, welcome back. Mr. G here again. We got another lecture for the electric circuits class, so Tech 101. In this lecture, we're going to cover some simple things uh, like the electric circuit basics. We're going to cover three sets of measurements. So circuit measurements, we're going to look at measuring voltage, current, and resistance. So the three elements that we've talked about in the previous class. And then we're going to look at the most important thing you will probably ever learn in your electronic study, which is Ohm's Law, which is the mathematical relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. So let's get started. So the electric circuit, the basics. I like to look at electric circuit in three different elements. The first one being safety. So there are elements of safety that are built into electric circuits. Whether there be something along the lines of a fuse, a circuit breaker, a ground fault interrupter. There are many different types of safety devices that go into circuits. Some of them are there to protect you, the user. Some of them there are there to protect the actual equipment. So things like circuit breakers and fuses are there to protect the equipment and things like ground fault circuit interrupters are there to protect you. So later in your studies for electronics, you will come to uh, study these components in more detail. So what makes up a fuse? How does it work? Why? What makes up a circuit breaker? How does it work? Why? And the same thing for ground fault circuit interrupters. So how does it work and why? So there's some form of safety built into circuits. So whether that be safety for you or safety for the actual circuit itself. The next is typically control. So how do you control the circuit? So the electricity that's flowing through the circuit, how do you control it? So it can be something as simple as a switch to be able to control the electricity. Switches come in many different forms. We've got push buttons, toggle switches, different types of push buttons. We have relays more relays we also have what they call solid state switching devices so things like transistors and thyristors So many different types of switching devices, all different parts of control. We can even have logic gates as part of control. So being able to control when the circuit comes on, when the circuit goes off, that kind of thing is all built into control. Now I'm just going to take a minute and talk about the basics of control. The idea is 
If I have a light bulb and I have a power supply I want to somehow be able to control when the light bulb comes on and when the light bulb is off. So something as simple as a switch. So when I close this switch, it closes the circuit and allows current to flow through my light bulb. When I open the switch, current ceases to flow or stops flowing. So when that switch is closed, the circuit is closed and the circuit is operating. That means current is flowing. When the switch is open, that means we have an open circuit. That means the current is not flowing. So a closed circuit a closed circuit means you have current flow. When the circuit is open, you have no current flow. Again, there are many types of control devices. So this is a control device. So it could be a simple switch, could be a relay, it could be something solid state, could be a push button. But the idea is to be able to control the flow of electricity in a circuit. So, the last element of the electric circuit, again, when you break it down into basic blocks, we've got safety, we've got circuit control, and then we've got the action or the work. So, what is the circuit supposed to do? So, if we looked at this circuit here, the action or work involves the light bulb. So when the circuit is closed, the light bulb lights and you can see. When we open the circuit, the light bulb goes out. So the light bulb in this case is the action or the work. So it could be a motor. So when you close the switch, a motor runs. It could be your computer. It could be your video game, your television, your telephone, so your I, uh, iPhone, your um, MP3 playing devices, whatever it may be, what does the control part? So we've got safety, control, and the actual action or work. Now, there's one thing that's missing on my list that is here in my diagram, and that is power. So a power supply, so the power supplies, we have DC, AC, many different forms of power supply. In this particular course, 
everything is going to revolve around a DC supply which we covered in the other lecture. So again DC stands for direct current, current that flows in one direction and one direction only. So in the electric circuit basics there is our DC supply. So typically some type of a voltage supply. So we've got control being able to activate the circuit. We've got the components of the circuit that are actually doing a job. We've got the DC supply and then again we have the safety. So now the safety is going to be let's say here so in this case a fuse so we have control we have safety we have power supply and then we have whatever the work or the circuit is supposed to do. Okay, so the components of the physical circuit. So supply supplies the energy, we've got safety, we've got the ability to control when the circuit is on or off, and then we actually have the circuit itself, the part that's supposed to do the work for us. So that is the basics of an electric circuit. Now you gotta remember there are many different types of voltages, many different types of safety devices, there are many different types of uh, controlling a circuit, and there are many different types of circuits themselves that do different jobs. But if we were to look at this as boxes, okay, so if we were to look at this as boxes, it would be something like this. So we have a power supply, and the power supply has some kind of safety. Some kind of control, and then some kind of action or work. So if we were to look at this as what's known as a black box, supply, safety, control, work and action. Supply, safety, control, and work in action. So that kind of makes up the basics of an electric circuit. So Next up is circuit measurement. So I have a circuit here. So circuit measurement. So I have 10 volts on my supply and I have two resistors in the circuit. The components that we want to measure are voltage, 
current and resistance. So those are the things we want to measure in any given circuit. In order to do that, we require a multimeter. A multimeter is a multifunctioned measuring device. It has the ability to measure voltages, currents, and resistances for us. Now this one has a few other functions as well. It'll measure temperature. Okay, it'll measure uh, things known as uh, the beta or gain of transistors. It'll measure something called a diode. And as you progress through your study, uh, you'll learn how to use all of those tools. But right now we're gonna stick with the three basics, voltage, current, and resistance. So let's do the simplest one, which is voltage. Voltage is a measurement of potential difference, so energy difference between two points in a circuit. So in that circuit that I had drawn, I had resistance one, I have resistance two, and then I have the voltage supply of 10 volts. In this particular case, there are arguably three voltages that you can measure. The first one is the voltage across the supply. So from this point to this point. So remember, we're looking at potential difference from one point to another. So here's one. We also have a potential difference here. And then we have a third one, which is here. Now I said arguably three. Some people might say that there's four and by doing a measurement from here all the way to here. But you will come to learn that this point is the same as this point and this point is the same as this point on a wire. In this class, you'll probably hear me say, a wire is a wire is a wire. What that means is, if we have a wire, let's take our wire. Okay, so if we have a wire, for practical purposes, the wire is looked at as having negligible resistance. So that means that if I touch this end of the wire with something and this end of the wire with something, it is the same theoretical point. So it doesn't matter where on the wire I touch, theoretically, or practically if you will, we're touching the same point. So anywhere on a wire that joins here, anywhere I touch is the same point. Same thing here. Anywhere I touch on that wire is the same point and anywhere on this wire is the same point. And I will demonstrate that to you. So we have three, arguably four, voltages. So we got V1, V2, V3. 
and B4. In order to measure voltage, this is a DC voltage, so we must put into DC. So there's a position here, a selection for DC voltage. You have to tell the meter what it is that you are measuring. Then voltage is measured here. So normally we have one black terminal in the common, and then for voltage, we put the red in where the V is. So now what we're going to do is we'll turn on this meter and we're going to go through these measurements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the black, uh, the red probe, so the red probe, which is typically the, um, the positive side and the black which goes to the more negative side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this probe and put it here and here. That would be my reading for V1. Then for V2, here and here. For V3, here and here. And for V4, here and here. Notice that the red is always closest to the positive side, whereas the black is always closest to the negative side. If you get them switched up, you will end up measuring a negative voltage. So let's give this a try. I have a circuit set up. So I have 10 volts coming out of my supply, so I will just go right to my supply and double check. And we'll set it right for 10. There we go, so 10 volts. So, I'm going to measure now across the supply right at the circuit. So what I've done is I have taken these lines here right from the supply. So that would be this one and this one. And that's 10 volts. So if I wanted to be exactly precise in how I do this, here's my first measurement. I am going to go right to the power supply itself and take the measurement. That would be V1. So right at the power supply, V1, 10 volts. Then I will go and take my measurement for V2 across that resistor. So here we go, right across the resistor. Nine point nine five volts. Then I'll go across the other resistor. Zero five volts. And then before I will go across both resistors. Ten volts. So, I have what is described as a voltage drop across that resistor. So that means what's the difference between one side and the other side? So, what happens as the current flows through the circuit, the voltage drops a 
particular amount across each component. So the 10 volts, we end up with 9.95 here, and we end up with 0 0.05 volts there. If you notice, these two values add up to 10 volts. So what we have is a circuit that is complete and we have measured voltages across. So again, I measured right on the power supply, I measured 10 volts. So that was V1. I then measured V2 across the component. I measured V3 across the component and then V4 was across both components. Like I said, these two values are the same. So voltage is measured across something, whether it's across the power supply, whether it's across the resistor, or any other component in a circuit. Voltage is a potential difference between two points. So you have to go on one side of that component and then on the other side of that component. So across. So voltage is measured across a component. Okay, so now we're going to look at current. I'm going to take the same circuit. Got our same circuit. 10 volts. Now, if you remember from our previous lesson, current is a rate of flow of electrons. Remember, we're talking conventional current flow, so we're flowing from positive to negative. We talked about, if you remember the swimming pool example, one electron insignificant in the swimming pool, but we fill a bucket. Remember that bucket was called a Coulomb. It was 6.24 times 10 to the 18th number of electrons in a Coulomb. One Coulomb flowing past point P in one second, that is one amp of current. So, in order to measure current, we need to count the actual electrons. So how do we count the electrons? Well, we have to get them to leave the circuit, go into the meter, get counted, and then return. So current is flowing through things. Voltage is measured across. Current flows through. So in this particular case, we want to measure the current flowing through our circuit. So the current flowing through our circuit. So here's what we need to do. We need to break the circuit. We then need to direct the electrons up into the meter to be measured and then return to the circuit. So again, the electrons have to go up and get counted and then return to flow through the rest of the circuit. So here's how it's done. We have to identify this point in the circuit. That point in the circuit is right here. 
So from our power supply, so from our power supply, before it gets to the first resistor, before it gets to the first resistor, we are going to break the circuit. Now what we need to do is we need to take the multimeter and put it in a position to count the electrons as they go through the meter back to that point. So we need to take our multimeter and we need to put it into a mode to count DC current. We have to take the red lead in this particular meter to measure current is in this particular input here. So now I have my two leads. Again, the red lead goes towards the most positive point, which is this one. So on my diagram, positive point here, negative point there. So I am going to connect these two. So that's this connection. So now the electrons are going to go through that wire. They'll get counted, but they have to return to the circuit. So now I'm going to reconnect this where I made my break right here. So the current flowing through that circuit at that moment in time is, we'll call this I1, for current is I, 0 0.9, and it fluctuates a little, 5 milliamps. Remember what we discussed in the very first lecture about prefixes and engineering notation. So milliamps, that's a thousandth of an amp. So this would be I1. So let's put the circuit back. So I'm going to take the multimeter out of the circuit and put the circuit back. What if I wanted to measure the resistance, or sorry, the current here? I would have to somehow break the circuit, take this wire, put it up into the amp meter, and then return here. Call that I2. So where is that point in our circuit? It's between these two resistors. So all I'm going to do is pull one resistor out of my board. I have broken the circuit. I am now going to connect the meter across that break. I2 is equal to 0 0.95 milliamps. Let's do one more. So now I'm going to break the circuit down here and put my meter. Call it I3. Connect my leads through the meter, get counted, and return. zero point nine five milliamps and then I'll remove my meter and go back to what I was before so in this particular circuit you'll notice that all the places along here where I did the measurements come up with the same measurement That is true because when the electricity leaves this power supply, all of the electrons flow in one common path. So it doesn't matter where you count them. So if we go back to our 
simple circuit, it doesn't matter where you count the electrons. There's only one path for them all to go. So the electron count will be the same. Think of it like this. If you have a garden hose and you have water going through the garden hose, if you wanted to measure how many uh, liters per minute were flowing, it doesn't matter whether or not you check it at the beginning of the garden hose, at the middle of the garden hose, or at the end of the garden hose the reading will be the same because there's no other place other than through the hose for the water to go. Same thing in the circuit. So, the last measurement we're going to do is a measurement of resistance. In the previous lecture, we talked about what resistance was. Resistance measured in ohms. It's an opposition to current flow. So in this particular case, here was our circuit. We have resistor 1 and we have resistor 2. And again, this was 10 volts. So if I want to measure the resistance of thou, those resistors in the circuit, here's what I need to do. I need to be able to remove the resistors from the circuit. You cannot measure resistance of a particular resistor inside a circuit when there's current flowing. Even if you turn off the current, there are other components inside the circuit that will affect your reading. So, the best way to measure resistance of a particular resistor is to disconnect it from the circuit and remove it completely. So, I will now take my meter and put it into measuring ohms, which is resistance. I will then connect the resistor between the two leads and measure the value. So the value in this case is 9 point nine kilo ohms and if I measure the other resistor it is fifty point six ohms so two completely different resistors now, those values are what the resistors actually measure to. But if you remember, there was resistor color code. And the resistor color code will tell you what value they're supposed to be within a tolerance. So if you remember, the last band in the resistor was tolerance. So let's take a look at this resistor. So this resistor, the colors are brown, black, orange, gold. So if you remember from our nursery rhyme, one, zero, and this worked out to be Three more zeros. So this resistor is supposed to be 10K 
plus or minus 5%. It's 9.9K. So it's within tolerance. So what it's supposed to be and what it actually measures are two different things. Let's take this other one here. This resistor, and I need my, it's a very small resistor, so I'm just going to need my magnifying glass. Green, brown, black, gold. So this one is green, brown, black, oops, black, and gold. So this was 5, 1, and no more zeros. Remember, this black means zero zeros. So this is supposed to be 51 ohms, plus or minus 5%. So again, with intolerance. Alright, so this is an interesting concept. I have here a resistor in my hand. I'm not going to tell you what the value is, but I'm going to measure it. Now watch this. I'm going to measure this resistor. And right now that resistor measures somewhere around, I don't know, it keeps fluctuating. Let's pretend it's one mega ohm. Just pretend. Okay? So, one mega ohm. If I looked at the colors of this resistor, they are yellow, violet, green, gold. So yellow, violet, green, gold. Yellow, violet, Green, gold. So that was four, seven. Green is how many zeros? One, two, three, four, five zeros. Gold is plus or minus five percent. So that works out to be 4.7 mega ohms. But when I measured it a minute ago, the value was fluctuating a lot and it came out to be something like one mega ohm. So let me try that again. Oh. 4.8 mega ohms. 4.79 mega ohms. Hmm. But when I measured it a second ago, it was this. Can anybody see my error? What did I do wrong? So now it's measuring fine. But a minute ago, I was measuring this. Hmm, let me take a look. Oh, there we go again. That's really screwing up my reading. Huh, I wonder what's going on. Oh look, the reading is correct again. Can anybody see what I'm doing? The fact that I'm taking my hand and I'm touching changes the value of the measurement because now my hands my body has resistance 
my body's resistance is now affecting my readings. I take my hands away and the value goes to normal. 4.7 meg. I put my hands in place. All I'm doing is just pretending to hold the leads and look how it affects my readings. Now watch. Get rid of, get rid of the resistor. I'm just going to take the leads and touch my fingers. My body has resistance. And my body's resistance is actually affecting my reading. So when I'm touching the wires, it's affecting the reading that I'm getting on the meter because my body is becoming part of the circuit. So anytime that you are taking measurements, do not touch the leads of the resistor or else your body resistance will affect what you're actually measuring. So, in order to measure resistance, pull the resistors out of the circuit, take your measurements, and don't touch the leads.